Did you know that, insert the name of your favorite video game franchise here, has always been woke and therefore should be woker? No? Well, it's a, um, <laughs> an interesting argument, which, well, it, it, it is an argument at least that we can grant it if precious little else. As this one here got me kind of thinking. This was a meme that was posted during the Dragon Age Veilguard controversy, which is even now currently ongoing, as the left is attempting to claim that the fact that it had, to be fair, relatively decent sales meant that it was a success, whilst ignoring the fact that it had been in development for the last 8 to 10 odd years and would need cyberpunk numbers to even have a hope in hell of recouping its losses. But details, details. That's not what we're really going to be focusing on here. Instead, we have a moment of good old-fashioned weaponized hypocrisy, because, well, if you can claim to hold one position and then also simultaneously hold the opposite position as well, um, you're going to be in a fairly unassailable one. And one of those is that gaming has always been super duper progressive, and yet also has always been super duper sexist and racist and must change. Mm. In this case, Dragon Age 1 and 2 has LGB characters, yup. Dragon Age Inquisition has trans characters, well, firstly, Inquisition was garbage, but okay, yup. The series has always been progressive and inclusive. We're gonna have to pump the brung b uh, breaks English there for a second, but for now, let's finish it up. Makes sense to me. That means Veilguard is nothing new and fits the series, woke, 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 woke. Okay. This is actually an intriguing wider topic here, because you know what? It is actually in part true. As with all good lies, it has a core of truth. In this case, the core of truth is that gaming, yeah, it was really inclusive, and for its time, it was also fairly progressive and open. Now, the word progressive has been changed rather drastically over the course of the last 10 years to be interlinked with politics, of course, but there was a time where geekdom hobbies in general were incredibly welcoming, remarkably so. I've mentioned on several occasions how War of 40k was probably the single most welcoming hobby I had ever encountered. No one was turned away, and the people who were in it were thrilled to find somebody new to talk about. I mean, I remember one of the first uh, like 40k friends I met were just having a casual conversation about 40k to other people. At school one day, I was like, hey, I remember that thing. Can I talk about it too? And we were talking about it like that. And we became friends, like instantaneously, practically. And again, nobody was turned away. It was unironically a very open and incredibly inclusive hobby. The same with Star Wars, the same with Star Trek, the same with pretty much all of these major franchises, because we were all outsiders. We weren't the cool kids, we were the ones being bullied. And when somebody else therefore showed an interest in our hobby, well, we were thrilled. Little did we know that it was the bullies uh, showing an interest and that we were about to uh, re-experience this whole cycle yet again. So, the argument here, Dragon Age 1, 2, LGB character, trans character, blah blah blah, always has been progressive and inclusive, and again, it has always been inclusive. Progressive is a bit of a different thing. However, these then became politicized values, or more correctly, when they were being introduced into our games, they were politically dormant, shall we say, until the modern day woke left leapt onto these ideas as a wedge to open the door to power by looking at a company and going, you're not racist, are you? Well, if you're not, you'd better give me money, power, and privilege in your society. Otherwise, I'm gonna call you that repeatedly on social media, with one of some of the earliest grifters, of course, like Anita Sarkeesian, earning one hell of a paycheck for years and years off that. It was, in fact, only, what, like, last year that she finally jumped off the grift? You know, 10 years of income is pretty damn solid for something so obviously false as video gamers hate women. It's pretty effective, frankly. So, these things were then beginning to be introduced, and they were introduced in greater and greater quantities with ever vaster vociferousness and hatred towards the original occupants of that space. Um, let me 
paint you a picture here. Let us assume that you enjoy the slight tingling sensation produced from pumping Tabasco sauce up your rectum. Okay, most people would indeed agree that this is probably a relatively unusual hobby, like, you know, wild gay orgies, etc. But we're all pretty much just here to live and let live and get along, right? So nobody's going to raise too much of an eyebrow. However, when you then approach other people and go, hello, would you like to have Tabasco sauce pumped up your rectum? People are going to start reacting, but we're all being... <sighs> nice here, and so some weak-minded souls decide to agree to this. And so we have a lot more of this being infiltrated into our groups and our societies. And you know, to a certain extent, there can even be argued to be benefits to this. I don't know, cleansing benefits. I'm still not really entirely convinced about the supposed advantages of a Tabasco enema, but you know, we're warming to the idea. But um, tish <laughs> Like, increased uh, romance options, for example. I've always been of the opinion that if you want to play a character of a certain gender and you want to romance another character, then, you know, go ahead. Who cares? You add in a gay romance, add in a trans romance, for all I care. Options are good, so long as they are options. As this is the problem. Just because you enjoy the tingling sensation does not mean that you wish to upgrade your interests to having your rectum pumped full of boiling oil, for example. As now, we are no longer talking about choice. We are no longer talking about an innocent addition. We are no longer talking about something that is additive. We are talking about something that is subtractive, which is the point I've made here. In Dragon Age Veilguard, you don't merely have diversity. You don't merely have options to, as a woman, go over and screw that other woman, or as a man, to go over and screw that other guy. That's not what you're getting here. Instead, what you're getting is every single villain is a straight white guy. Every single goddamn one of them. What you are getting is an awful character creator that allows you to create, create some truly remarkable abominations, but struggles to create anything even remotely cute looking. It is a game in which you get companion characters that are actually unattractive unless they're male, in which case every single one of them looks like Fabio with different hair colors. That is not choice. That is no longer option. We have now gone so far down the path of diversity and inclusion as to unironically exclude the original audience. The original audience of Dragon Age wanted to have a world on the brink of destruction. They wanted to have blood and gore. They wanted to jump up in an ogre's head and tear it off with their bare hands. They wanted a brutal, violent universe that was, in many ways, rather grim dark. Some have argued it to be like Bioware's take on Dungeons and Dragons, and to a degree, but far more gritty as well. They wanted a setting that had a little bit of eroticism in it too, as that was one of the main selling points of Dragon Age Origins. Blood, go, and titties. Who could refuse? frankly. Whereas now, we don't have the blood, we don't have the gore, and we don't have the titties. But we do have pronouns. We do have entire conversations dedicated to nonsense real-life topics. We have kunari that don't even really even embrace the idea of gender more so than class, really, is what they're focusing on. Sitting down and going, hey, mother, I'm non-binary. And they go, what the hell does that even mean? It means I'm not male or female. Okay, what are you then? Non-binary. But you define yourself by what you're not. This doesn't make any sense. And it certainly doesn't make any sense in Dragon Age. It is simply assuming that the current year brain rot we are currently suffering with has somehow jumped the veil and invaded Dragon Age 2. It is nonsensical. And if you even wanted representation like this in a game like Dragon Age, it should actually be met with unironic bigotry. <laughs> you know, actually, straight up. 
If you have a character in Dragon Age that is like, hey, I'm a they, them, non-binary, the reaction should be mockery, laughter, probably some persecution and anger, frankly, because that at least would make it a more interesting story. Have a character that is actually being persecuted for this, and you might even engender some support for them, some actual goddamn sympathy. Instead, you create a world that is no longer Dragon Age. You no longer create this own universe. It is a fluffy wuffy interpretation of our current day. That again goes back to the replacement of the original audience. Dragon Age is no longer a video game for gamers. It is no longer Dragon Age. It is California. This is not a, a complaint that repeats again and again and again and again in modern entertainment that it is no longer Star Wars. It is no longer Lord of the Rings. It is no longer Warhammer. It is no longer Dragon Age. It is the current year yet again. There is no longer any room for entertainment. There is no longer any room for the video game to be a video game. And yet still, despite the fact that we have now made this game into one enormous fluffy wuffy soft hug box for political ideology, it is still not enough, as progressivism must ever progress. I have still already seen complaints about Dragon Age representation. How the girl bosses aren't quite girl bossy enough. How the trans experience doesn't quite reflect one person's experience. How the men are a little bit too insensitive to their problems. How even Isabella's ridiculous apology, non-apology explanation of how an apology can never be an apology somehow misses the nuance of how you can't have an apology without an apology. This entire thing and has devolved into just current year politics, which will of course age unbelievably poorly. You can play Hitman 1 today, you can play Sacrifice today, you can play the original Counter-Strike today, you can play the original Baldur's Gate today, and they are still good because they are games. Whereas in 10 years time, if anyone even remembers things like Concord or Dustboard or Dragon Age Origins, Origins, excuse me, Veilguard, it will be because of the politics surrounding it. We have, in essence, arrived at a point in time where gaming, where entertainment is defined not by the quality of the escapism it provides, but by the degree of politics it pushes onto you. <laughs> it's absurd, but it's true. I mean, hell, our entire current day culture war conflict is based around that. We applaud games who lack politics, and we, like Black Myth Wukong, which I still consider to be a decent Souls-like game, but far from one of the best, becomes an enormous sales success for the simple reason that it isn't woke. We, we raise these games up, and deservedly so, because they go against the narrative. Whereas games like Veilguard are deservedly so stepped down because they are the narrative personified. In another world, Dragon Age Origin would have origins. I keep saying that. Veilguard. I don't know how many times I've mixed up those two now. Veilguard would have released to like 6 out of 10, 5 out of 10. It's like, okay, it's a pretty mediocre ARPG without a whole lot of story elements. Yeah, it's not very good, but if you're really obsessed with Dragon Age, you know, it's got a thin veneer of it. Instead, it releases to massive divide, where a unified mainstream press praises it as the greatest thing ever, and probably a Game of the Year contender, which is absolutely absurd. Whereas the rest of us look at it and go, what are you even on about? The writing is terrible, the action is adequate at absolute best, and the entire world has lacked, uh, lacked more correctly, lost all form of uniqueness it once had. This isn't Dragon Age anymore. Because, again, it is a game defined not by its gaminess, not by its entertainment value, but by its political values. 
This is the issue with this. Even though you may argue that there were elements of diversity in previous Dragon Age games, and you could go as far back as the origins of video games to find elements of this, because again, video gaming has always been an inclusive hobby. You can then still go on and go, oh, but we added more of it. We have now added in only that. Hey, I heard you like pie. Would you like to eat pie forever? Is in essence what we're looking at here. Mm. It is a fairly poor defense. And it is something that we do need to be aware of as well, as I'm sure now we will begin to see a more defensive stance from the progressive side of things, arguing not that we should go further, but arguing simply that we should maintain the current level of brain rot that we already have. And to that, I say, no. Return to the 2000s, and only once we arrive there can we yet again have a brief glance at the future. Return to Monkey. It is the only solution. Anyways, let me know what you think in the comment section below as usual, and until next time, I've been Arch. Thank you all very much for watching. I do hope to see you all again soon. Have a good day.